Okay, our next committee meeting is Lake Welcom Reservoir and Natural Resources, and I'm going to turn it over to the chair, Dan Councilman Hamm. Thank you, President uh, Vargas. Uh, joining me today, uh, this afternoon on, on this committee, are uh, Council Members Bornem and, and Knutson. We have two items before us this afternoon. The first one is an ordinance amending the 2015-2016 adopted budget to account for additional funding in the amount of $474,128 from the Department of Ecology for the Bioretention Hydrologic Performance Study uh, EV-0133. I'm just going to read the summary statement real quick here. On 12-16-15, uh, the City of Bellingham entered into an interagency service agreement for pass-through funding with the Washington State Department of Ecology in, in the amount of $88,634. The City has hired a consultant to study the hydrologic performance of bioretention stormwater facilities, commonly known as engineered rain gardens. Additional funding in the amount of $474,128 was received through two amendments to the existing agreement. A budget ordinance is needed to amend the 2015-2016 budget and recognize the additional revenue. These funds have no match requirement and will have no adverse fiscal impact on the city. And here to take us through is uh, Ted Carlson. Thank you, good afternoon, Ted Carlson, Public Works, along with Renee LaCroix. I think the summary statement was a good explanation of what's before council today. Ultimately, it is a request for a budget ordinance to amend the 2000 uh, 15 16 budget to include additional revenue from the Department of Ecology. The city is already engaged in a relationship with Ecology to uh, monitor the performance of essentially rain gardens uh, to see whether or not they actually are meeting the performance in terms of water quality improvement that uh, the Department of Ecology manual and the modeling suggests that they will. So it's truth checking the rain gardens to see if they're performing as expected better understand sizing requirements and how the rain gardens can be utilized in the future. The results of this study will help uh, in the future to modify perhaps the Department of Ecology manual that's used throughout Western Washington. So it's not specific to the city of Bellingham, although uh, we have a lot of rain gardens in Bellingham and it's an ideal place to uh, check to see if they're actually functioning as we hope that they are. So it is 100% pass through money uh, we'll pay for the study and all of our costs associated with the study. Uh, there is no city match. Renee is here to answer any more specific questions you might have about the project, but it's a good example or a good opportunity for Bellingham to be involved with ecology and better understand how effective the rain gardens are actually at removing the pollution from the stormwater runoff. Committee members. Uh, Gene, sorry. I'll move approval of the ordinance. Okay. Agreed. Okay, excellent. And just to clarify, um, this is for public capital facilities. This is not for HIP program. Yeah, uh, that's correct. It's for rain gardens that uh, are used as a, a stormwater facility for infiltration. And really, the new stormwater requirements from Department of Ecology focus on infiltration, bioretention, rather than building vaults and detention pipes like we uh, have in the past. Uh, the principles certainly could be used on in the HIP program as well as rain gardens are a, uh, a reasonable BMP best management practice for dealing with phosphorus as well. So I think uh, that's maybe not specifically why we're doing it, but I think the results and what we find in terms of performance could certainly be applied to those as well. Thank you. Um, any other questions, council members? Okay, there's a motion for approval. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Uh, motion carries 3-0. Second item, sorry. Second item before us is a report out <clears throat> from the Lake Whatcom Policy Group. Um, this group consists of representatives from Lake Whatcom and Water and Sewer District, the Whatcom County Council, Sudden Valley Community Association, and Bellingham City Council. We meet on a monthly basis to discuss uh, Lake Whatcom issues, and I just want to give some highlights from the um, the last meeting that we had on June 13th. We had three items before us. Um, first item was in. Um, design options for the homeowner incentive program or the HIP program. I'll just uh, go through this briefly. Uh, stormwater capital projects are built on public land um, with public dollars and HIP projects are built on privately owned properties with a um, combination of public and private uh, cost share strategy. The first version of the program, HIP 1, was grant funded and operated in a concentrated geographic area on the north end of the lake. That's all within the city boundaries. Homeowners are expected to make financial contributions to the project with cost, with, <clears throat> pardon me, with cost reimbursed 
after completion up to the uh, $6,000 per property limit. HIP 2 will build on HIP 1 but differs in several aspects. The new program will expand to include large areas of Basin 2, which is mostly in the county. Staff uh, will have more of a coordination role rather than a design role, and there will be expanded involvement of private contractors in design and construction. Staff presented program design options. One issue was whether to have a per parcel monetary cap on investments. Staff recommended that the program have no size cap, but should have a minimum project threshold of treating 25% of a property. The 25% threshold could be met by one or two projects. An example given was a driveway that drains into a rain garden. Annual budgets for the revised HIP program are still being determined, but the need to hit a 50-year target for retrofits to meet the D Department of Ecology's TMDL or total maximum daily load requirements will help set the annual total. The county is expected to increase its contribution as more of the program activity shifts outside the city limits. Second item before us was a presentation of annual Lake Whatcom residential build-out report. So there are approximately 17,000 developed residential units across the watershed with the potential for about 1,700 more. Most of the potential units are either in Southern, Southern, Southern Valley or in the rural watershed with very few potential units in the city or its UGA. There's been a slowdown in development since 2010 with a one-year spike in the rural zone during the 2014-15 period resulting from the conversion of recreational lots uh, into cabins at Wildwood Resort. And the third item before us at the policy meeting was the update of the transfer of de development rights or TDR program. This program was de developed to reduce uh, development potential in the Lake Whatcom watershed by allowing development rights to uh, residential units to be transferred out of the watershed into receiving zones providing more dense uh, development in those receiving areas. In practice, however, very few of the development rights have been transferred because there's not been enough demand by developers for higher density into the receiving zones. Only one or two developers have utilized the program. County Council has inserted a new policy in their draft comprehensive plan calling for the establishment of a multi-jurisdictional advisory committee, including the, uh, the cities, to meet and see if it's possible to restructure and reinvigorate the TDR program. Next meeting of the Lake Whatcom Policy Group is July 18th, uh, 3 p.m., Fireplace Room, 625 Halleck Street. And that's the end of my report, end of my committee. I don't know why I keep turning this thing off. I'm still recovering <laughs> from a cold. I'm not quite, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>